Hello, my name is Dan Kober and I'm gonna show you one quick tutorial on how to do Aurora Borealis effect like the one you see on this video that's running here. Uh, it's uh, actually a quick and easy tutorial so let's get to it without wasting too much time. Let's remove this. So first what we need, we need uh, one plane I'm gonna place it like this and you need a bunch of vertical segments like I have here and then we're gonna open up material editor and we're gonna switch from this uh, standard compact material editor that I personally prefer for most of the situations where I need to manage a lot of materials and stuff like that but uh, we're gonna use the slate material editor which is node based editor and we're gonna remove all of this because this is what I've been practicing before so we're gonna just drop our blank material and we're gonna apply it to our plane here. We're gonna click assign material to selection button. So what do we need first? What we need first is a transparency map for our Aurora and we're gonna do it by mixing a couple of gradient maps. So first we're gonna create a map that will be that will be RGB multiply. That will be our first mix where we're gonna put a new map and we're gonna use gradient ramp map. And we're gonna drop that one in uh, color one slot. <coughs> Sorry. Okay, now let's edit our gradient ramp. What we want, we want to have it black on each and uh, on left and right edge, and then have a gradient uh, uh, gradient uh, to the white. So we're gonna add one more black slot here. Now right click on it, edit properties. We're gonna place it at five. Okay, that's good. Then we're gonna edit this one. We're gonna place it at um, 20 and we're gonna put white color. Okay, and I want to duplicate this like we have on the left side to the right side. So we're gonna add one more here color and we're gonna put it on 80. Okay, and then next one here and we're gonna put it on. Oh, sorry, I'm gonna put the black color on it. Right click, add properties, 95. Okay, and the last one, we're gonna just put the black. So we have our gradient on both, both ends, and basically, uh, the black will be transparent and white won't be transparent. So, okay, now we have this. Now we want to have transparency also on top and bottom. So we're gonna duplicate this gradient ramp uh, by holding shift, click and drag. So we duplicate it. I'm gonna place it down. This one up, this one down. And we're gonna connect in the second map slot. But we're gonna rotate it by 90 degrees. And if you take a look at here, you can see that we got now nice gradient on sides and on bottom and top but for this one we want to have uh, a bit uh, different situation than from the first one we're gonna drag this white down here we're gonna leave only this white but this one we're gonna put almost at black but not too much okay so you get this nice fall off from top to the bottom and you're gonna move this one slightly above okay now let's see how this looks on our plane oh it doesn't look like anything because yes we didn't connect it to our map slot <laughs> we're gonna connect this to our opacity map slot now let's see what we got. Yeah, now we you can see here that we have nice gradient from the sides, from the top, and a bit stronger transition from bottom to this middle part. 
Next, what we want to have, we have we want to have a bit of variation, sort of a noise in it. So we're gonna create one more RGB multiply map. Okay, RGB multiply. We're gonna connect it into our opacity slot. And this one we're gonna put here. And on the top material we're gonna put so uh, gonna put one noise map like this. And now you can see that we have more noisy transparency map. But we're gonna slightly edit this noise map. First of all we're gonna uh put uh uh, I we're gonna put this tiling to 0 .0, 0 0.2 maybe so that you get nice vertical streaks and you're gonna turn on fractal and increase the level of detail for this fractal noise and uh, we're gonna increase the size to 10 because of that the, the default value was definitely too small and let's check what we got now yes you can see now I'm gonna just let's change the rendering settings a bit like that Okay, you can see that we have nice detail in it in our map, but we're gonna increase the size a bit more, maybe to twenty. Yeah, I think it's it's a bit better. Great. Now what we need we need a bit of a color to our map. So what we're gonna do we're gonna grab our noise like that. And we're gonna connect it to diffuse slot and we're gonna change one color to uh, green and another one to a bit more blue like that and you're gonna change the size to let's say 100 like that we're gonna also drag it to I'll make put it a bit closer connected to, to, to our self-illumination map slot and let's see what we got yes that looks in more more interesting well to make it a bit more interesting now since we have a, have a material we're gonna play a bit with the geometry and we're gonna do it by adding a noise modifier we go on the no modifier tab and under the modifier list we're gonna find and choose noise modifier and what we're gonna do next we're gonna put values a bit some bit larger values here we're not gonna use this axis just then this one yeah that's the one we want with a bit I can also leave this x axis on zero doesn't matter Okay, I'm also going to turn on animate noise, but as you can see, it's quite dramatic. We need to tone it down a bit, so we're going to turn frequency to 0 0.01. Now let's remove this. maybe increase it a bit because it's a bit too slow so we're gonna put it on maybe increase it a bit because it's a bit too slow so we're gonna put it on 0.5 let's see okay I think that could be that could work uh, but to we don't want to have this um, sort of a 
tilted vert uh, polygons because it looks, if you render it out, it looks weird. You want it to be more straight up, so to do that, you're gonna select the gizmo or noise modifier and just gonna scale it up. And you can see it strains, it, it still has a bit of variation, it's still not perfectly straight, but it's much, much better, in my opinion. Okay, so we can then duplicate this. No. Uh, sorry, I'm still inside the noise modifiers gizmo. Yeah, I almost forgot one thing. Since we have our procedural maps here, we can also animate them. So we can animate our noise modifier for our streaks of light. I'm uh, gonna turn animation like that. I'm gonna animate to phase four. It goes from zero to four. And we can also animate our color changes like that. Let's go to phase three. That should be fine. Great. Now, next thing I would prefer, I prefer to do in situations like this, uh, is to have a linear animation keys. So we're gonna open our curve editor. Okay, and select our material. Like that, and we're gonna just straighten it up. Also, self elimination phase is straight. Great. Let's check the others. Opacity. Ah, here we have it. Okay. Okay. That should do it. Now let's check it out. Oh, yeah, one thing to remember. If you're using a standard V-Ray render, uh, the standard TDS Max render, you have to turn on two-sided. And we have to turn, see it from above. Okay, so we have to look it from this side. Yeah, this looks now much better. Okay, so since uh, we have basically set settled up the animation through the of the maps, we can also make the model itself to have a bit of variation. We do have it animated after all. So what we're going to we're going to duplicate it, make this copy, and just change the seed. Then make another copy, change the seed. Make another copy, change the seed. Like that. And like that. Let's just give it a bit of more vertical scale. And let's see what we have created. Uh, interesting, definitely interesting. Great, now let's make a short animation and see what what it look like in motion. I'll put it in rendering and get back to you once it's done. Hello, I'm back and we have finished rendering, so let's see what we got. And yeah, here it is. I mean, in this rendering, the entire motion of Aurora is too exaggerated. Uh, to make it look better, you need to make it more subtle, more slower. But in general, I believe that you got the point. And uh, since uh, we created this uh, effect uh, using the procedural maps in our material, uh, it's uh, basically easy to use this on any kind of different materials, it doesn't have to be a standard 
This is the max material. It can be used for V-ray materials, mental ray uh, materials, or any kind of different uh, other available materials in C3 Studio Max. Or even, you can, if you wish, render out the texture into the texture files and use it in your game engine as animated uh, texture for some similar less dense object that you would put in the sky and have a 3D animated uh, nebula in your game. In the nebula, sorry, <laughs> Aurora. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, more or less that's all I have to say about this tutorial, this technique. And if you like it, please like the video. If you don't, dislike it. And if you like what you see on my channel, please subscribe and I'll try to make a couple of more tutorials and uh, show you how I did some other things inside 3D Studio Max and I'll also try to uh, finally get to the point to make some promised tutorials for Unity also. So have fun and farewell. Bye bye.